Hello, I'm Sean Plunkett, production manager for Gemini Saw Company, and I see you've purchased the new Taurus 3 ring saw. Let's take a look, shall we? The first thing you notice when you open the saw is this instruction manual. Get rid of it. Only communists read instruction manuals. <laughs> The instruction manual is a wonderful tool for the use and maintenance of your saw. Please keep it along with your packaging in a safe, dry place. Let's open her up. That was easy. The first thing you see when you open your box is your work surface, your packaging foam. Put this aside in a safe place as you may need it later. Have your saw, your other portion of packaging foam. Included with your saw is this package of accessories, your face shield, this foot used on the handheld unit, a packet of bearing oil to lubricate your saw, your water tub, your water tub, your water tub. The Taurus 3's internal parts consist of one drive gear, one drive belt, one diamond coated blade, two groove grommets, five idler pulleys one of which is spring-loaded and needs no adjustment. And that's everything! <laughs> Crap! Putting the saw together is a snap. <sighs> Let's start by putting the saw in the tub. Simply drop it in nose first, roll it back, push it down, and make sure the clip is engaged. Simply add water to the water tub at the indicated level. And remember, the saw must always be used with water. That's nice. Now that we've got water inside of the tub, it's time to place the work surface on. Simply slide the work surface over the blade, onto the tub, and make sure it's flush. And now we're ready to cut. Before we do so, let's talk a little bit about the water. If you live in a hard water area, it's always best to use distilled water. But if you don't have that available, add a couple caps full of vinegar to the water and a couple drops of dishwashing liquid for lubrication. And now we're ready to plug it in. But before we do so, let's make sure the switch is down and in the off position. All right. In order to supply power to your saw, simply plug it into a grounded outlet. Or use a grounded extension cord. Let's not forget to install the face shield. Simply slide the face shield over the nose until the pegs slide into the indentions. Once in place, you can flip up or down as needed. It's always a good idea to wear eye protection, like these. For demonstration purposes, we'll keep our face shield flipped up. The general rules for cutting on the Taurus 3 are as follows. Let the saw do the cutting. Give the material light but even pressure in the direction you want to go. Listen to the sound of the motor as you cut. If the motor begins to bog or emits a deeper tone, you need to reduce the pressure on the blade. Follow these rules and you'll not only have a happy saw, you'll have a happy you. Here's a short list of do's and don'ts. Do. Gently guide the material into the blade using even pressure. Note the steady tone of the motor. Don't. Jam the material into the blade, causing the motor to struggle to keep the blade rotating. Do. Use all sides of the blade, forward, backward, left, and right, to follow the curves of the pattern. Don't. Twist the material around the blade in order to make a curve. This will not only cause clearance problems, but also cause uneven blade wear and shorten blade life. Do. Take your time. The more careful you are, the better your piece will turn out. Don't. Be in a hurry. You won't only be unhappy with the final product, but it could be dangerous. 
And now we're ready to cut out our first pattern. A simple, easy way to adhere the pattern to the glass is to use Xerox paper and rubber cement. A thin coat of rubber cement over the glass and a thin coat on the back of the paper will allow it to stick easily. Another thin coat over the paper will allow it to be waterproof. We'll be cutting out our maple leaf pattern. By the way, all of these patterns are in the back of your instruction manual. Another great reason to keep it. In order to turn the saw on, simply flip the switch up and notice the integrated spotlight. Let's begin. Start out at any point and cut to the edge of the pattern line. As you begin cutting, remember to keep the edge of the blade on the edge of the pattern so that you keep detail and the pattern doesn't shrink. Remember, the saw cuts in any direction so you don't have to twist and turn the material in order to turn a corner. If you stray from the pattern line, you can always go back with the saw and use it to clean up the edge, as I'm doing here. Using light pressure, slide the material back and forth against the blade until you're back on the pattern line. As I continue cutting the pattern, notice how I use all sides of the blade, forward, backward, left and right, without ever twisting and turning the material. It takes a little time to develop a steady hand when using the saw, so don't be discouraged if your pattern doesn't come out exactly the way you want it. After about two to three pieces, you'll be able to cut with precision and ease. Because of its unique design, the ring blade grinds as it cuts, saving you time, material, and the frustration of trying to clean up all those tiny inside cuts with your grinder. And now let's try wall tile. This is a soft bodied wall tile, perfect for the standard blade. Again, start out at any point on the piece and cut to the edge of the pattern. The technique for cutting tile is no different than when cutting glass except that you notice that the saw is cutting a bit slower. That's because you're cutting a thicker, denser material. The outcome will be just as good, a finished piece that will require no further work. Remember, use all sides of the blade, forward, backward, left, and right. Although cutting harder material like marble or granite is acceptable with a standard blade, we recommend using the Mega Blade. Refer to the Mega Blade section for further information. Replacing a blade is easy. All you'll need is a Phillips screwdriver and Will. Come over here, Will. No? Alright, I'll do it. First, loosen the inside grommet and slide it back. Then release the belt from the spring tensioner arm. Unravel the belt from all of the pulleys. When you get to this point, pull the belt out and the blade is released. It's that easy. Replacing the blade is just as easy. Make sure you have your belt groove side out. Drop your blade inside of the belt. Wrap it around 360 degrees and pinch it off so that you don't lose the blade. Drop your blade belt assembly inside of the raceway making sure it drops in between the blue pulleys. Wrap your belt around the top pulley here then around the bottom pulley here. Then flip your belt around. Then wrap the belt around the upper pulley here, down and around the drive gear, up and over the next pulley. Lift up on the spring tension arm here and slide the belt under the pulley. Then slide the inner groove grommet forward until it makes light contact with the outer groove grommet and snug it down. And remember the golden rule, always rotate the drive gear counterclockwise to make sure everything is rotating. Now that's nice! Now let's try the separating blade. Thank you. Oh, there you go buddy. Get yourself something nice. The separating blade goes in the saw just like the solid blade, with a coupling together. Just make sure the female side is facing up. Make sure you have your belt groove side out. Drop your blade inside of the belt, wrap it around 360 degrees, and pinch it off so that you don't lose the blade. Drop your blade belt assembly inside of the raceway, making sure it drops in between the blue pulleys. 
Wrap your belt around the top pulley here, then around the bottom pulley here, then flip your belt around. Then wrap the belt around the upper pulley here, down and around the drive gear, up and over the next pulley, lift up on the spring tension arm here, and slide the belt under the pulley. Then slide the inner groove grommet forward until it makes light contact with the outer groove grommet and snug it down. And remember the golden rule, always rotate the drive gear counterclockwise to make sure everything is rotating. Now that's nice! Before using our separating blade, we must first drill a hole in our tile or glass, like this. Many people are intimidated by this, but it's very easy. All you'll need is a drill, an eighth inch carbide drill bit, or a two millimeter diamond bit, some modeling clay, a teaspoon of water, and a block of wood to drill through. It's very easy. I'll show you how. The first thing we do is take the clay and roll it into a snake. Then take it and make it into a ring, place it on the glass, and press firmly all the way around so that it makes a seal. Then take your teaspoon of water, pour it into the middle for lubrication, and now you're ready to drill. Take your drill, place it into the middle, and begin drilling. When drilling, use light pressure, watch the cloud of glass form around the bit, and when the water begins to drain, you know you're through. Get out of here. In order to find the coupling, you must turn the drive gear counterclockwise. Place your finger on the blade to highlight the difference in color. The coupling will be slightly darker. And there we have it. Pull the belt off of this pulley. Now that you've taken the belt off of the pulley, you release the tension and you're able to pull the blade apart like this. Slide the glass over the blade, find the hole, and put the blade back together. Now wrap the belt back around the pulley. Don't worry about any gaps in the coupling. When you reattach the belt, it'll close tightly. Now replace the door. First put the back of the door on, hold it in position with one hand, snap the front end, and go around the door making sure you have a tight seal. Make sure your switch is off, reconnect power, and we're ready to go. In order to remove the glass from the blade, just follow the previous steps in reverse order. Remove the face shield, remove the door, remove the belt from the pulley, open the coupling, and slide the glass out. What a fabulous butterfly! This is the Gemini Saw brand bearing oil. I did! <laughs> to you, simply rip off the top. Remember, a little goes a long way, so put a small amount around the head of each screw. Allow time for the oil to seep in. It's only necessary after many hours or months of wear. This stuff works great. And action! Let me introduce you to the Taurus Hole Reducer. The hole reducer is a great tool for keeping debris from falling inside of your saw and possibly damage internal parts. After peeling the hole reducer from its backing, pull the two tabs apart and wrap it around the blade. Make sure to press all the way around the blade to create a tight seal. Another great place to use the hole reducer is on the bottom portion of the nose where the blade exits. Wrap the hole reducer around the blade. This time, make sure that the tabs overlap so that you get a nice tight seal. 
Now we've been cutting with the saw for approximately six hours and it's gotten pretty dirty. Let's clean it out. First remove the face shield, then the upper door, now the work surface. Take the saw out of the tub, set it aside. Remove about half of the water from the water tub. Leave the other half in and use a scrub brush to loosen up any of the debris that's left on the bottom. Once you've loosened up all the debris and dumped out what's left of the water, use clean water to rinse the tub out. If you want to take it a step further, add dishwashing liquid to clean water and let it run for about five or ten minutes. For people who live in hard water areas, we recommend that you change your water after every use. If that's not possible, then take the saw out of the tub and leave it outside when it's idle. We've got a lot of cutting hours on our saw. It's time to check the wear parts. First start by taking the saw out of the tub and then unplugging it from its power source. Let's take a look, shall we? Let's start by removing the groove grommet assemblies from the saw. The outside consists of a groove grommet assembly and a Phillips head screw. The inside consists of the same groove grommet assembly, a Phillips head screw, and a brass spacer. Make sure to keep these parts handy. You'll need them to put the saw back together. Now let's take a look at the difference between a new groove grommet and a well-used groove grommet. A groove grommet starts out its life with a V-shape that tightly holds the blade. As it wears, it begins to open up into a large U-shape like we see here. When it opens up, it allows the blade to wander a bit. The more it wears, the more the blade will wander. So it's a good idea to visually inspect these grommets and also take note of how the blade is cutting. The groove grommets last approximately the life of one blade, but remember, the more aggressively you use the saw, the more often you'll have to replace them. To remove a groove grommet, take a small flathead screwdriver, place it under the lip, push down, and pry it up just like opening a soda can. Here's another easy way. Take a utility knife and cut straight down to the bottom of the grommet. Keep those fingers clear of the blade. Then with a flathead screwdriver, wedge the cut open. And remove the grommet. Now it's time to put a new groove grommet onto the assembly. You'll notice that it has a slightly rounded side and a completely flat side. Make sure this flat side sits flush with the flange. Place the grommet over the assembly at an angle and push straight down. Make sure to visually inspect that the groove grommet is sitting flush with the flange. You'll notice that when removing the groove grommet assemblies from the saw, that one faces inward and one faces outward. It doesn't matter which way each of them face as long as it's in the opposite direction. Now let's reinstall the groove grommet. To install the outside groove grommet, place it over the boss and slide the Phillips head screw through it. Start by finger tightening it. Snug the screw down to keep the grommet in place. Then take your inside groove grommet assembly, slide the brass spacer in small side first, flip it around and insert the Phillips head screw through the entire assembly. Find the floating nut inside of the saw and hand tighten. Leave this grommet hand tight so that you can move it out of your way when reinstalling the blade. Because of the double sealed stainless steel self lubricated bearings, in all of our pulley assemblies, they have an extremely long life and may never need to be replaced. Now let's talk about the drive belt. It's a neoprene rubber Kevlar reinforced belt with a groove cut down its length to house the blade. Each one of these belts will last approximately three to five standard or separating blades. A new belt will have a groove that closely resembles the shape of a standard blade. As it wears, the groove begins to widen. 
as well as deepen, exposing a copper color, which is the Kevlar reinforcement. It's recommended to replace the belt at this stage, as any further wear may result in damage to the saw and the blade. And you don't want that. Here's how to check if the pulley assembly needs replacement. With the belt off, rotate the pulley by hand. It should spin smoothly and freely. As far as the drive gear goes, it should last the life of the saw. Installation of the Mega Blade is just as easy as installation for the standard blade with one exception. Removal of this upper pulley here for added clearance. Because there's no flexibility in the Mega Blade, you'll need that extra space. Wrap your belt around the blade 360 degrees, pinch it closed, and drop it inside of the raceway. Hold it tightly and reinsert the pulley. Flip your belt around, wrap it around the upper pulley here, around the lower pulley, up and over the pulley here, down and around the drive gear, up and over this pulley here, lift up on the spring tension pulley and slide the belt under it, slide the inside groove grommet forward until it makes light pressure on the blade, and snug down the screw. When installing a Mega Blade into the saw, you won't be able to follow our golden rule of rotating the entire assembly by hand at first, but I'll show you a trick. Make sure your saw is filled with water. Reinstall your work surface so that you don't get wet. Reinstall the door. Hold the door shut with your hand and bump the switch a couple of times. Now when you remove the door, you'll be able to rotate the entire assembly freely and make sure all parts are moving. All right. Now that we've installed the Mega Blade, let's try cutting some hard materials. Let's start with this marble. Wait a second! You'll notice the cutting technique with the Mega Blade differs from the cutting technique with the Standard Blade. Cutting on the Mega Blade is directional, whereas the cutting with the Standard Blade is in any direction. There's good reason for this. Instead of having a round shape like we see here in the cross section of the Standard Blade, the Mega Blade has a teardrop shape like we see in this cross section. And now back to the cutting. The majority of the cutting with the Mega Blade is done with the front and back. You can use the blade sideways, but because it's so much thicker from the side than it is from the front, it cuts much slower. It's actually easier to turn the material around the blade to change direction. The advantage to the Mega Blade is the additional strength the teardrop shape provides, which makes it ideal for dense materials. The actual cutting time for this 3 8 inch or 1 centimeter marble was just over 10 minutes. Now that's a swell gecko. And now, let's try some granite. Holy sh! granite takes a long time. Let's speed up the film.
the actual cutting time. <clears throat> the actual cutting time for this three quarter inch or twenty millimeter granite was just over eighteen minutes. Dig that crazy mermaid. Now let's try cutting human flesh. Hey, you want to make twenty dollars? Actually, accidental contact with the blade will not cut skin. But it will quickly cut fingernails and calluses. Hmm. Did you know that the Taurus 3 can be used as a handheld unit? It can. Yes, it, yes it can. Yes, it can! In order to convert your saw to the handheld unit, you must first unplug it from its power source. Now remove it from the tub. Here are all the parts necessary to convert your saw to the handheld unit. The foot, the bottom cover, the thumb screw, and the bottom cover clip. First let's attach the foot. Take out the screw, slide the foot onto the bracket, and put the screw back in. Tighten the screw down slightly to allow up and down movement of the foot. You may need to adjust it later depending on the size of the material you're working with. Now let's install the bottom cover. The bottom cover has sponge inside of it to retain water. Soak the sponge in any clean water source. Slide the bottom cover into place, hold it steady, and insert the thumb screw. Tighten the thumb screw until it's snug and to create a positive seal around the bottom cover, slide the tapered clip up, wide side first, and into place. For safety reasons, let's reinstall the face shield. When using the saw as a handheld unit, the sponge will retain water for approximately 5 to 10 minutes. You'll know it's time to re-wet the sponge when water is no longer flowing from the saw and you can see dust rising from the cutting area. It is imperative to keep the sponge wet to avoid internal damage. When you can't bring the piece to the saw, now you can bring the saw to the piece. When it's too heavy, bulky, or just too fragile to maneuver around the blade, maneuver the saw around it. Another example is on a completed panel. Upon installation you realize the panel is a bit too large to fit inside its frame. Just use the handheld saw to trim off the excess. The rules for using the standard or separating blade with a handheld unit are the same as with the saw in the tub. The difference is you rest the saw on the foot and allow the foot to slide across the material as you're cutting. Remember, use all sides of the blade, forward, backward, left, and right, to promote longer blade life. It might be a good idea to put something under the piece to catch falling glass. The handheld unit can also be used for inside cuts. Just keep in mind the depth of the throat, which is 5 and 3 quarter inches, when planning your design. This is our improved foot that's available as an upgrade. It gives added stability to the blade, which greatly extends blade and grommet life. The foot is highly recommended when cutting dense materials, and will work with all of our blades. It also keeps the blade more stable, making it easy to make even the most intricate cuts. Well, it can. Can't tell me. Let me introduce you to our Super Slicer. This device allows for repetitive, perfectly parallel, ultra thin cuts in pattern bars, canes, streamers, milfiori, or virtually any other type material. How thin? just over a sixteenth of an inch. 
The Super Slicer comes with the RAM, the base, double-sided tape strips, and three different sizes of rubber band. The base also comes with removable pins that, when removed, allow the Super Slicer to be used with virtually any other saw. Place the base so that the center of the groove lines up with the center of the triangle. That way, when you slide the RAM forward, it will clear the blade without any interference or damage. To attach the material to the Super Slicer, in this case a pattern bar, start by attaching the double-sided tape to the RAM. Then attach the material to the double-sided tape. To keep the piece secure, attach the appropriate size rubber band. Whoa, careful! Don't shoot your eye out! Attaching the rubber band is accomplished by first hooking it to the hook on the bottom of the RAM. Then pulling it around and attaching it to the hook on the top. The hooks on the top correspond to the hooks on the bottom so that the rubber bands won't be cut by the blade. Still, a rubber band will get cut from time to time, and that's why you get big bags full. Position the RAM on the base so that your first cut will remove the least amount of material and give you a clean edge to start from. From there you can begin slicing. Every time you slice a piece off, slide the RAM back and step it over to the next appropriate groove. Try to keep even pressure all the way through the cut. Remember not to force the material. At the end of each cut, go very slowly to limit the amount of breakage on the slice. If absolute precision is not a necessity, you could use the super slicer without the double-sided tape of the rubber bands. This way is definitely a time saver and is especially easy if the piece has a flat bottom like this one does. The Super Slicer can be used with the standard, separating, mega, or even the slicer blade like we're using here. The slicer blade is the thinnest blade Gemini makes and will take away the least amount of material. You can also free cut with a slicer blade. Hold it. You'll notice that when we're cutting with a slicer blade, we're not following the golden rules. Remember, the standard blade is round, like in this cross section, which allows you to cut in all directions. The slicer blade is flat, which only allows you to cut forward and backward. We now return you to your regular scheduled cutting. I don't know what that is. Allow me to introduce you to our Taurus accessory kit. We have the straight edge, the 45 degree edger, two circle makers with double sided tape, and the lamp wedge. I know what you're thinking, and don't worry. I'll show you how to use each one. The straight edge, with its two pins, can be mounted anywhere on the work surface, and in any position. It also comes with a fine adjust for pinpoint accuracy. Although straight cuts are best accomplished with a glass cutter, there are many examples where the torus is useful. Thin cuts in tile, difficult glass such as fused or rippled, trimming oversized pieces that are a 32nd of an inch too wide, or simply for tiny thin cuts. In general, the straight edge 
can set you straight. When cutting with the straight edge, remember to push the material into it as well as forward so the piece won't wander. Use two hands or any convenient object like the one we use here to hold the piece up against the straight edge. Although the last portion of the cut may crack, remember to keep pushing the piece through to finish your line cleanly. The 45 degree edger works in conjunction with the straight edge. Place it against the straight edge, place the material on top of it and pass it across the blade. Make sure to keep positive pressure on the straight edge while making your pass. The 45 degree edger is extremely useful for making boxes. Now let's try the circle maker. First start by peeling the backing off the double sided tape and placing it onto the back of the circle maker. Then remove the opposite side backing, place it into the approximate center of your glass or tile. Now measure out from the center of your circle maker and make a mark. Remember, radius is half of the diameter. <laughs> With the glass upside down, cut to your mark. Turn off the switch, slide the glass into the blade and find the corresponding hole on the work surface. Put your finger right in the middle of the glass to hold it stable so it doesn't rock. With your other hand, spin the glass around. Allow time to grind off the remaining nub. And finally the lamp wedge. Place the lamp wedge as close to the blade as possible without making contact with it. When doing projects like panel lamps, two corresponding pieces on a curve become very wide, leaving you no choice but to fill it with solder. Flip each piece upside down, turn on the saw, using the lamp wedge pass each piece across the blade. Now you're left with a tighter seam that will require less solder. And isn't that what we all want?